Hi, this is Stan Bush. Hi, this is Stephanie Calvert. This is John Payne. This is Jack Hughes. Hi, I'm Gary Stevens. Hey, everybody. This is Prescott Niles. Hello, I'm Kofi Baker. So welcome back to our Bob Dylan music video rankings. This video is going to be us talking about our top 10 Bob Dylan music videos. In the last video we made, we talked about all of the parameters that uh, qualify videos for your consideration, so make sure you see that. And we also ranked our number numbers 25 through 11 in that video. So be sure to watch that video first. Um, and then check this one out. And if you have seen that video already, now we are gonna dive into our top 10 favorite Bob Dylan music videos. So Chris, let's start with you. What is your number 10? All right, so my number 10 is going to be the night we called it a day. So I said it's, it's pretty close to what you had it ranked as. Here's one that I know you, you're excited to talk about, and we started to touch on the subject matter a little while ago. My number 10 is Beyond here lies nothing. Sure. So Beyond Here Lies Nothing is a more recent music video from Bob. We talked about this video a little bit in our Dylan Through the Decades, Bob Dylan in the 2010s episode. So the story with this video is like a few we've already discussed before. Bob does not appear in it at all. Uh, basically, a woman is being held captive by an abusive man. It's very violent. She breaks free from him, runs out into the street, gets in the car, is about to escape, and then as the video ends, she gets back out of the car and runs back into the arms of this, again, very abusive man. I've read that this is supposed to be a metaphor for drug addiction, that's how I read this music video. It is a very violent video. The abuse shown in the apartment beforehand is quite graphic and definitely uncomfortable. So uh, I know you have more thoughts on this than I do, but I ranked it at number 10 because I think it's uh, effectively shot. And again, if it is a metaphor, like I, I think that's well done. Yeah, I think I mean I think it's exceptionally well crafted. I think that the 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 bleakness and the darkness of the video matches the the bleakness and the darkness of the lyrics of the song. Beyond here lies nothing. Yeah. Um I, I think you could go even more broadly and say that it's not necessarily about drug abuse. I mean, in a in a sense, domestic abuse, uh, all yeah. of these things are are representations of sometimes uh, the human desire to be close to or in, in or 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 live and and feel things that are ultimately very damaging to us uh i i, I think it's a it's a very good video i ranked it not substantially higher than you but i mean I guess it's in my it's in my top five is this where we start to talk about how violent of a turn the last four dylan music videos have gotten yeah, let's let's talk about this briefly here. Um, so what we were saying at the back end of our last video is that the most recent music videos that Bob put out, and we, we there's a couple more we're going to get to, right. yeah. are feature a noticeable amount of violence, and it is uh, a trend I was not aware of until we watched them sort of in the order that they were made. There's violence in the videos that Bob appears in, and also like this one, violence in the videos that Bob does not appear in. There is a lot written about how the Rolling Stones went through sort of a violent period in the early 80s where a lot of their songs and their music videos from that era feature some pretty graphic, violent lyrics and stuff like that. And I think there's something similar going on here where we talked about, you know, the lyrics found on Bob's late era albums before the Sinatra stuff. So like late 2000s, early 2010s, uh, you know, Dylan is a little unhinged. And a lot of these lyrics are very dark. 
And I guess thematically, that's at least partially why we saw so much violence um, in the music videos like this one, Beyond Here Lies Nothing, The Night We Called It A Day. We're going to talk about uh, Duquesne Whistle. You know, what do you think was going on here? I don't know if he's having like uh, flashbacks to counting beans for, uh, you know, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid or, or what, what's going on. Uh, but, I mean, there's definitely a Peckinpah vibe to the whole <laughs> thing. Let's hear it. Uh, beans. Beans. Spinach. Eastern. Tums. Beans. The, the world's become increasingly violent. He's he's always kind of got his thumb on the zeitgeist a little bit. Maybe this is just him expressing that. It's coming out in the you know the ether of it. I, I don't know. Yeah, but it, it's notable. I mean, it's definitely there. It's not. It's four or five music videos back to back, and even lyrically, yeah. since really lyrically since time out of mind, where okay. it's been the, the progressively darker and darker, except for his covers, obviously. Do you think that um, maybe it's that and maybe he's just a fan of violent movies? So he, if he thought if he's going to make a, a music video, like, like, let's make it a violent movie. I mean, violent movies are great. I mean, I yeah, can see that's like, true. <laughs> he loves boxing. Oh, know, I mean, that's it, right. It is, no, it is notable. That, I mean, he, he definitely sought out and, and actively participated in a peck and paw film. I mean, I mean, maybe he just likes violent movies with purpose. Bleak film, like films that, I mean, these aren't just throwaway violence for the sake of violence. They definitely have, there's more to this. Maybe, well, with the exception of uh, uh, Must Be Santa. <laughs> yep, well, there's even violence in that one too. Festive violence. Did you know that um, he was approached to do a theme song for the film Rambo 3 in 1988? That would have been bad shit. That would have been a <laughs> Were you disappointed when Bob Dylan didn't want to do the soundtrack for the movie? It was a long shot. Take a long shot. Yes. He's a great artist. Oh, is he that turned it down. Is he, that he the was, one where he goes he back to Vietnam? No, no, that's the, the no, that's the crazier one. That's the one where he's in Afghanistan fighting alongside the Taliban. Well, that's not crazy. Oh. They were they were our buddies in '83. That's he got yeah. to kill some Soviets. That was his yeah. whole. And we hate the Russians again. So it all comes, it all turns around. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Full circle. So, so if nothing else, if, if you take away nothing else from this Bob Dylan centric music video, music related video, the message here is give Rambo 3 another shot. <laughs> this is your last warning. The choice is yours. What do you say, John? Fuck them. All right, screwing around enough here. What do you have at number nine? All right, so this is my first supper club. We've uh, entered your elite tier, the supper club. Excellent. Supper club what do you got? Now. Political world, which I know you have. Oh, okay. Actually, okay. lower. So we discussed political world uh, amazingly again, ten spots back because I didn't rank it very high. My number nine is one. Uh, we don't get the 10-point the gap here. We get an even larger gap. This is one you ranked very low. My number nine is We Are the World by the charity supergroup <laughs> USA for Africa. <laughs> Once again, another one that a whole bunch of people watching probably don't think counts, but uh, I do. Counts for me. This this video is hilarious. Because um, here, here's the thing. So, like it or not, you cannot deny that We Are the World is an absolute, of the time, iconic moment of the 80s. This is uh, sort of a, you know, if you're looking at anything that is like a montage of the 80s, you're going to see something from that, because this was a big cultural moment. And look, it is a trip to watch so many of these artists who are in their prime get their little moment in the sun on what is admittedly not a great song. But some people, like you mentioned earlier, Springsteen, and if you rewatch it, Huey Lewis it, are, are like going nuts in their little moments. <laughs> 
that is fucking fun. I don't know how else to put it. If like if if you watch We Are the World and that like sours you or puts you in a bad mood, like I don't know what to tell you. Like yes, it's tone deaf. Yes, it's cheesy, but that's what makes it so great. It's sort of darkly funny because you could tell that so many of the people in this video really thought they were saving the world when the after effect is that like a good chunk of the money they raised did not go to what they thought it was going to. <laughs> it was a lot of that money was used for some very bad things, unfortunately, and you can read more about that on your own. But as far as Bob's appearance in this video, he gets his little moment and he's like wearing a winter jacket and he's shot from the side when everyone else gets a nice front and center, you know, a face photo, you know, in the center of the frame. Bob's again shot from the side wearing a big coat. Odd. Can't even see his earring. There's that famous gif uh, that someone grabbed from the group shots of uh, them singing the chorus of We Are the World and they just zoomed in on Bob's face as they're singing and he's not singing along and he's just kind of like swaying back and forth looking very uncomfortable and he like just embodies introvert at a party like he embodies like I don't want to be here <laughs> and getting that on camera for posterity's sake that alone is worth a top 10 mention for we are the world no I totally agree all right good I've swayed you I'm sure you'll adjust your rankings accordingly what do you have at number eight Duquesne Whistle. Duquesne Whistle. Hold steady. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Number eight, I have End of the Line from the Traveling Wolverines. You know, it's the band playing while on a train. So they're, you know, thematically appropriate. End of the Line, riding the train. Uh... I think the best moment in the video is um, when it gets to Roy's verse, they cut to just a photo of Roy on a rocking chair uh, because Roy had sadly died like right after, I guess they shot the music video for Handle With Care, like right as the Wilburys were starting to land, uh, commercially at least, Roy passed away, which is really sad because he wasn't really even that old. He was in his 50s. And uh, that was a nice little tribute they did for him. It's a fun video. The guys look good. Um, uh, gotta say, I noticed that they really shot around Bob, like the camera is over his shoulder, where again, Petty, Harrison, and Lynn all get the, you know, headshots in the video. <laughs> Not necessarily the case with Bob, but in any case, great song, competent video. Thumbs up for me. I agree with you. I think it's very poignant with the with the Roy Orbison piece, um, and not just his photo. They have his guitar on the rocking chair too, which is I love that they got the you know, yeah. It's just it's just a nice. It, it fits. It. I mean, end of the line. It fits. It's a, they're on a train. It fits the whole. It, everything works. It just it works very well as a music video. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well let's go to your number seven pick. End of the line. Oh, th oh, this is great. Uh, because my number seven pick is Duquesne Whistle. There you go. So we had him swapped. Oh, damn yes. it. We were so close. Let's talk about Duquesne Whistle. This is from his, I believe, 2012 album. And we talked about this video, I think, more than any other videos in our last Dylan Through the Decades episode, uh, which was about Bob in the 2010s. And again, just to recap... The video is focused not on Bob, but on a young man who is starting off the video by pursuing a woman, and she is not into it, and as he tries more and more times to um, get her attention, uh, he gets himself in trouble, the police chase after him, and then he, he, he accidentally injures a guy who's in a gang. And then when he gets out of jail, the gang captures him and, like, beats the shit out of him. Which, again, quite violent for a music video. Very graphic. And the guy is, you know, thrown out of this van. And there's this great moment near the end of the video where the gang is in the van driving him to the place where they're going to dump him. And in his head, he's doing his shtick around this woman he's attracted to. And she's reacting very positively. And just in the moment... He's about to kiss her. 
he sort of wakes up because they throw him out of the van and he just hits the pavement. <laughs> this is a uh, very dark but hilarious video. It's absolutely one of my favorites, and I should say the Duquesne Whistle video is where I've left the good category, and now I am in elite tier. These are my favorite Bob videos. Duquesne Whistle is one of them. And as far as Bob's role in the uh, video, he doesn't do anything except that he's just walking around the streets of this same city that this guy is in, followed by this ragtag posse of rather bizarre looking characters. And I think I said in uh, our podcast that uh, Bob looks like he has um, like mortician corpse makeup on. <laughs> The only interaction he has with the guy is right at the end of the video. The guy is laying unconscious on the pavement, and Bob and his gang steps over him, and they keep walking, and then the video fades out. So uh, even though Bob is basically a non-factor, uh, his appearance in the video is funny to me, and again, I think this is a really well-shot, well-put-together video. So big time thumbs up. I, I agree with everything you said. All right. No, nothing to add. It's all nothing yeah. to add. No, nothing to add, really. No. That's why I bring you on, buddy. <laughs> What's your number six? Things have changed. My number six is "Handle with Care" from the Traveling Wilburys. I like this music video because I think it's uh, the Wilburys at their best. It is mostly a performance clip, but. Uh, there's a shot of them or their truck pulling up in the start of the video and then through the video there's flashbacks to old photos of them in their youth. I think it's really well shot. There's some camera angles and cuts that I, I really liked. Bob unfortunately is kind of an afterthought because I don't think there's a single shot of him without Petty. I think him and Tom Petty are in every single shot that Bob is in. And that's probably his preference. But again, this is one of those really iconic moments of the late 80s where these guys getting together, showing we are the world what a actual super group would be. Great song to boot, so yeah, I, that's, a, that's a winner for me. To me, uh, End of the Line was more in keeping with like a proper music video. I mean, it, it's still basically a performance. Yeah, but they're they're on a train. It fits the, the, the idea of their end of the line, you know, the whole thing. It just, it made more sense as a music video to me. But I, I get it. I just, it was, to me, Handle with Care, they seem to be phoning it in a little bit more. It was okay. nice to see Roy actually as like a living human being in the music video. Yeah, I, I would have to say that's a factor too, seeing Roy in his last ever music video appearance. And he, he looks good, you know. It, I, I have to do a little bit more reading about why he fell so out of favor in like the late 70s and early 80s. Because he had one of the coolest late 80s comebacks of any of those 60s rock stars that had their their 80s comeback and i i just don't understand why anybody would get sick of him i mean this is gonna sound mean yeah but like you said he looks good in that music video i would counter that he looks like like a ventriloquist comedian oh no. that would be like they're like greaser like cool guy character <laughs> like he looks like a ventriloquist dummy yeah I don't you know. You know what doesn't help is the rat tail he's got. That's going what I'm trying on. to say. And he's yeah. very smooth. You mentioned the mortician makeup and Duquesne whistle. Uh, sure yeah. They're covering up the fact that his his skin has turned uh, just gray or something. I don't yeah. know like, what's going on, but it's not. He does not. I wouldn't say he looks good. Moving on. What do you have at number five? Now, this is where I put Beyond Here Lies Nothing. Okay. My number five is one I honestly contemplated putting number one <laughs> and it's another violent video from Bob's late air career this is must be Santa from Bob's 2009 Christmas album now in this video Bob plays sort of an out of time mythical figure that's, you know, singing the song at a Christmas party. Maybe people would think he's like the host of this Christmas party, but I don't think so because in the video, a gigantic brawl at the house breaks out and Bob doesn't care and nobody even seems to notice him. He's just sort of observing this big Christmas party getting out of hand and a big cartoon fight between all these different guys breaks out. It's very fun. 
My favorite moment of the music video is right at the end. The guy who started the big fight gets thrown out of a window, and the camera pans up from that wreckage to Bob standing next to Santa Claus. And Bob gives Santa such a hilarious expression where he's just like, you know, he just kind of shrugs at him. And uh, it's just a great little moment. Very appropriate for the Christmas season. A surprise hit. You know, this is what we talked about when we talked about this album in our Dylan series. I don't think anyone expected this Christmas album to, like, be really good, you know, outside of Dylan fans. Uh, And we both like it a lot. I like this song a lot. And I think they delivered a quality appropriate video to go along with the rest of the whole project. I, I would agree. And, you know, and you mentioned the mythical, uh, you know, he's like a mythical sort of almost. Yeah. Scene. You know who he is? He's Jack Frost. Oh, damn it. Yeah, you're right. Yes, that is his, his, his producer, producer you know, he, pseudonym. When he yeah. does production, it's credited Jack to Jack Frost, Frost. Man, that's who he is. Yeah. I'm pissed I didn't catch that. Well, yeah. Done. yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, you haven't listed it yet, so this is a top five video for you too, huh? Must be Santa's number four for me, buddy. Oh, okay. Beauty. All right. Moving on to my number four is a video that uh, you mentioned quite a while ago in our previous episode. You had it ranked 12 spots back, not our typical 10. This is Tight Connection to My Heart. So Tight Connection to My Heart is from Empire Burlesque which is not a good album. This is Bob's most MTV style video. So the story of the video is that Bob is in Japan and he gets like arrested or something and he goes to jail for a little bit and then gets out and then meets up with some of his backup singers and it seems like there might be some sort of three-way romance with him and two of the singers at the end of the video. It's not really a narrative or a cohesive story But it is so 80s in the sense that it is a middle-aged rock star who has been convinced into thinking that he has to make a concept music video to get really any traction on MTV. And then they come up with something that maybe he liked at the time, but when they actually started filming, you could tell he did not want to fucking do it. But there are also some shots in the video where that doesn't seem to be the case. Like, uh, there are some moments where he, he seems to be having a good time. And there are also some moments where I think he looks genuinely cool. You know, where he's got that, like, uh, is he wearing a motorcycle jacket and a trucker cap when he's playing guitar? Come on! Yeah, that's 80s cool! You know, it's, you know, you... You might laugh at it now, but I, I get a kick out of it. Actually, after hearing you talk about it, I wish I had ranked it lower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because here's the thing. You know another reason why I like it so much? Because this, more than anything else that he's ever done as far as music video goes, this has to be the one that makes his old school Harry Dean Stanton type fans cringe the most this is the one that the old school fans and maybe you're part of it that look at this and think bob what are you doing you know and for that alone that cracks me up so that's another reason why i put it so high my favorite moment in the video is maybe the cringiest moment of all it's right at the end where he's doing that synchronized dancing yeah (laughs) i was gonna say yeah Come on! And what also makes it stand out is that he never made a a video like this ever again. And there are so many other middle-aged rock star types who made videos like this through the 80s. Guys who could not quite um, figure out what MTV was all about. For a lot of people, they hate them, but these are some of my most favorite parts of the whole MTV era. Is like, I like when middle-aged rock stars are dragged kicking and screaming into the MTV era. It is funny. Sometimes it works out, you know. I, I think of the Pete Townsend videos as one of them. You know, you should be, uh, what is that, Rough Boys, where he's in the pool hall. 
that's yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot to unpack there but anyway. yes there is and we do not have time for that but that's uh, another video <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is you know what i'm talking about when i say these middle-aged rock stars who don't really know what to do with mtv but are giving it a shot anyway do you have a higher or do you have a high tolerance for that stuff or does that really just make you roll your eyes maybe not as much with dylan I'm in, I'm embarrassed for Dylan in tight connection to my heart. It's um, yeah, not good. I would not. No. Say it's good. <laughs> I disagree. I think it's very good. But is that the video you think we have the biggest difference in ranking that we have the biggest disagreement on? Where did you put like a Rolling Stone? But we're at the same. Like a Rolling Stone, we have the big. We have the same gap. We have twelve. Also. Oh shoot! My, is that your number three? One, which leads me to number three, which is okay. like a Rolling Stone. Yeah. So my number three is what is probably his most iconic music video. Now we're getting into some real music history. Subterranean Homesick Blues. His only pre-MTV music video that qualified for my parameters with this list. This is, of course, the famous single shot of Bob in the alley uh, next to the hotel in London uh, holding cue cards that have the lyrics to the song and sort of dropping them off uh, to reveal all their lyrics as the song plays. It's synced up surprisingly well. You would think in a concept like this with how fast he's singing in that song that it would get like out of sync, but he did a really good job just dropping them exactly when he needed to. And it holds through the whole video, which is well done. I had um, author Keith Miles, who wrote a book called Bob Dylan in London, uh, on this show previously. He talked about the filming of that music video, so if you want to learn more about the background and uh, about that music video, check that out. I bet there are some Dylan fans who will tell you this is his only good music video. Uh, this is the one from the 60s. This is one of his true culturally iconic moments. This is one of those moments that made young Bob Bob, uh, and I see why it holds up. It's a good video, and it shows that even music videos, something we've talked about that he's obviously not a big fan of, he was way ahead of the curve of. Yeah, I mean, people have said it's the first true music video. Um, I don't know. I mean, the Beatles did some stuff. You had releases. It's hard to. I think it's probably hard to make that. Yeah. Fame. Just like he did, probably didn't invent rap with that song either. Although right. he certainly was an early adopter for both forms, right? And to sure. his credit, um, it's it's. And I'll just, I'll spoiler alert. I'll just. It's my number two, so it's the one coming right up. Uh, yeah, I think we're in agreement. It's just as a cultural milestone. It's kept out of the top number one for me, just because it for me. It's a little like pretentious. And maybe that's just because Allen Ginsberg is in it. I'm not a big Al of the beats. Allen Ginsberg for me is always the one that's like, he diddle kids and stuff. Like, and they don't really talk about that a lot. And I'm saying kids, underage folks is what I should yeah. say. Uh, but it's, there's just things that I didn't, um, I mean, honestly, his whole thing is just being pretentious. Ginsberg's whole yeah. vibe. So maybe just having him in the background with like his staff ruined it for me. But it yeah. just been going. There's, and I don't have Ginsberg in the background ruining it. It would have been even, Maybe number one. And one of the things I liked about a lot of these videos is it's very much of the time. I like things yeah. that make sense. They seem authentic for the time that they come out in. Subterranean Homesick Blues, Homesick Blues definitely is one of those videos that kind of strikes that chord for me. Tight connection to my heart is very much of its time. I said that. I said that's why it wasn't like number like 30. Oh. It, it's <laughs> <laughs> it is number 16, which okay, for okay. is the top of my fast food bracket. Oh, okay. I'm, you know I what? Coming from you, that's Taco Bell for me. That, that is a compliment. That's the okay, top of my fast that. food. That is, uh, it's White Castle, actually. You know, it's you know, Do you know my favorite uh, Allen Ginsberg story? Do you know the story about him and Patty Smith? <laughs> no. That, no. So the, Allen Ginsberg and Patty Smith are good friends. And that started because Patty Smith was trying to buy a sandwich somewhere in New York. And uh, I don't think she had the money for it. So Allen Ginsberg was behind her in line and, you know, gave her a quarter or whatever it was and, you know, bought it for her, you know, because he saw that she didn't have the money. So they went down, you know, to a table together and they started eating. And then a few minutes in, 
you know, Alan made a face at her and leaned over and asked, uh, are you a man or a woman? <laughs> and she said that she was a woman and he was like, oh, I thought you were a boy. <laughs> a boy. That's yeah. The, not right. a man. That was what he said. A boy. Yeah. Patty Smith herself. I mean, I can see where the two of them would get along because Patty Smith, uh, very pretentious. Absolutely. And also yeah. canceled now because of rock and roll. Right. Rock and roll N-word recently taken off of Spotify. Very quiet about that, too. She's not getting a big public canceling. They're just kind of quietly erasing uh, that little aspect of her. It's a great her. song, but the use of the, the word in that song is far more problematic than Hurricane. Oh, sure. The way. <laughs> it's like, and, oh. Okay. And, and her Ooh. defense of the use of that word in that song is laughable. But we do not have time to litigate that here. So do some yeah. reading on your own. Uh, it's a very interesting topic, but we can't get to that here. Especially because we are at now my number two pick, uh, which I'm thinking is one you talked about already. Number two for me is Things Have Changed, which you put at number six. Things Have Changed. Okay, so this is a music video tie-in to the film Wonder Boys. We talked about this in our Dylan in the 2000s episode. This is an excellently shot music video in which Bob is sort of inserted into scenes from the movie. This is really well done. So most soundtrack songs are usually just clip shows like Hearts of Fire, which we talked about earlier. And that's lame. But Bob's team took the clips from the movie and filmed Bob in a way so it looks like he is in these scenes and the other actors in these scenes, it looks like they're reacting to what he's singing. And of course, something that you mentioned uh, when we recorded the pod about it, there's a great moment near the end of the song where he says, you know, the next 60 seconds will feel like an eternity. And if you look at the timestamp, there's exactly 60 seconds left in the song. That is a great little trick. Um, and a hidden gem as part of the song. This is the sort of video that I think validates the medium itself. Like, if you're going to do music videos and you're going to do them well, this would be the end result. And I just think it's a really good showing uh, for someone who was past the MTV era and didn't necessarily really need to make big concept music videos anymore. And I think this is his... Not necessarily his most ambitious, but it's one that lands the best. You get the most bang for your buck in this one. I think, honestly, the only reason it's not higher for me is that is because of the constraints of it being a soundtrack music video that just, I think, handcuffs the, the creative artist in charge of the video too much. Um, but I love this video. You know that. I've talked about it. And honestly, I probably would have ranked it higher, but things have changed. Um, I, I, I saw... <laughs> God so, damn it. I am sorry. I I don't think I did an entire I don't think I did a pun for the last video or for this entire video. Now I had to put something in there. Yeah. Um, it's not even a pun. I don't know what that is. It's just a dad joke. Um but I agree hundred percent. And it, 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 the way it, they seamlessly and I think probably I'm gonna guess they had the input or not the input, but the uh cooperation of maybe Michael Douglas and Robert Dye Jr. and some yeah. others with as well. I'm thinking they probably reshot some stuff just to make it look it looks I would think so. For it to be, yeah, and when it's because it is truly thing, seamless. Like there, yeah. it does not. It looks excellent. And I feel like when it's Dylan asking you to do that, especially if you're of that, that generation, especially for like people of like kind of like minded, like a Robert Downey Jr. or Michael Douglas. I mean, who's going to say no? Okay, I'm looking yeah. at my list. I are we? We got the, we got the same number one, man. Oh, I'm barely man. certain. This is where it counts. We land on the same number one. That is good shit. Okay. And it's one we haven't talked about at all in the previous episodes oh. because this is from one of the outtakes projects, right? The number one video, I guess, for the both of us is Series of Dreams. Dreams. Which was uh, a song that was left on the cutting room floor from the 1989 album, Oh Mercy. I learned about that after we did the Dylan in the 80s pod. And I got to say, th this this might be, to me, Bob's 
biggest creative misstep. I like this song way more than anything on Oh Mercy. This is my favorite music video of his. For those who have not seen it, I would really recommend you go check it out. The concept for this music video is that it is largely... It's largely stock footage, which when I first started watching it, I started to get nervous that I thought I might have to cut it because it didn't meet my parameters. But there was some uh, original footage filmed for the music video. Also, the stock footage is not presented straight up. It's all re-edited, re-stylized. There's a ton of really interesting visual effects. This is might be really one of the only videos on this list that I would describe as like truly beautiful. Like it's almost like a, a painting. Like it is very uh, visually stimulating. And the only one of these that we've talked about that got, I think appropriately, a Grammy nomination. Um, all of this for a song that he fucking cut from Oh Mercy. What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, it, it's not as well known because it is from the it's, it's from his first bootleg series. It's from volumes one through three, I think. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was up for it was up for the Grammy. It. So I, the reason you've heard it is because so literally I got home from like uh, I think being out at the bars or something, maybe with you even months ago, and uh, just fell asleep on the couch. But before I did, I put on an, as I often will do a Dylan YouTube uh, just like channel or whatever, and they play yeah. just. You know youtube videos of dylan songs as it goes through i woke up at like 3 30 in the morning to literally just as the song is starting as the video is starting and i'm like what is this how have i not heard this song before what is this what is this dylan song and i think the entire next day joe and i worked together uh remotely i was pinging him on our you know instant messenger chat that we have at our work joe have you watched series of dreams yet i keep sending you the link Joe, for the love of God. <laughs> and Joe finally watches it and is like, oh, you were right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you were right about this one. This, this, often you annoy me and it's not the case. <laughs> you were right about Series of Dreams. Yeah, maybe maybe the most right you've ever been when you've pinged me with some this and that. Yeah, jaw-dropping. Not just, not just, again, the video, but the song is so good, you know? An appropriately matched elite-tier song with elite-tier video. I'm so happy that we conclude our number ones uh, as the same pick. That is excellent. We did not plan that, by the way. That is totally uh, authentic. And we synced up on a couple of other songs, but not too many. I think our 11 and 12, something like that. But anyway, thanks to everybody who tuned in. Uh, if you missed the announcement in our previous video, um, which was the back end of this list, uh, you know, we were saying that uh, this is probably our last Bob Dylan uh, content, at least for a little while, because we are moving on to our next songwriters series project, and that is going to be focused on the life and career of the legendary Warren Zevon, who most of you know because of uh, Werewolves of London, but that barely scratches the surface. There is so much more to this guy's discography and it is life his fucking crazy life and i i can't tell you how excited i am for it i think that's a great pick uh as a follow-up to our our dylan series i will say doing this dylan stuff with you has been a real treat i i know we're gonna have as much fun if not more with warren zivon and that is going to be kicking off in january 2023 so be sure to subscribe to this youtube channel Keep an eye out for that. You can find our social media links in the description below. Um, and with that, thanks for joining us. And thank you, Chris, for uh, indulging me on this very tedious and haphazard put-together project. <laughs> thank you, as always, for the invite, Joe. I appreciate it. I'm really excited for the Warren Zevon project. You could say I'm an excitable boy. <laughs> I'm glad I kept recording that. <laughs>